Norman Jean McDonald. Nebraska if he hadn't gone through that last <laughs> um, Hey guys, how you feeling? Man? All right, everything cool? Oh, yeah. Me too. I flew in. Uh, uh, fucking having this thing with going from uh, LA to Vegas. Anybody from LA? Anybody go to LA, Vegas? Yeah, it sucks. That motherfucking flight, because it's a lot of turbulence, you know? And so I, fl I flew for a long time, and, it was, and then there was these turbulence that scared the fuck out yeah. of me. So I said, from now on, I'm not going to ever fly, just drive. I don't drive, but just get driven, you know. So I get a buddy of mine to drive me from L.A. to Vegas, which is the most dangerous fucking thing of all time. So you're driving, and you know, it's six hours, and you're behind a fucking truckload of trembling logs in front of you. It's like a thing's rearing, because the guy's been awake 19 hours. And uh, you gotta go, I hope I fucking survive this pass. You know? And then, but here's the most frightening fucking part for any of you who have ever driven that. You know when you're driving, and then you see tire marks going into the desert. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> and there's never any coming out of the fucking desert. There's a desert full of motherfuckers. You said it. You said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. remember? Yeah. Sorry for saying goddamn all the time. Oh, it's still it's working. It's still working. Uh, Luckily, it's a... Uh, it's a, what's called an extra long cigarette. King size. King size. So anyways, I love being in Vegas because I'm a fucking degenerate gambler and uh, <laughs> cocksuckers are so evil, they pay me in chips. <laughs> cocksuckers are so evil, they pay me in one chip. <laughs> I was on the elevator. I, you ever hear like just a snippet of a conversation and it tells you everything you need to know just from that one little <coughs> snippet, you know? Like for instance, I'll give you an example. Like one time I was walking beside these, uh, these two homeless guys right on the street and one homeless guy says to the other, he goes, why in the fuck were you ever a goaltender for the Montreal Canadiens? <laughs> <laughs> you need to hurt no fucking horse shit. That was the last straw. But anyways, uh, I'm in the elevator. Now here's the thing. A lot of people go to Vegas and they go, they come with a system, you know, they're going to break the bank, they're going to, they're going to beat the casino, you know, so they figure out a system and uh, believe it or not, some of these systems actually don't work at all. So <laughs> what I think I saw just or heard rather from my little snippet was the unravel of a system because I get in the elevator and in the elevator is a man and a woman and a whole bunch of tension. So, uh, so then the elevator starts going down with the four of us, and uh, suddenly, out of nowhere, the man just snaps at the woman and goes, uh, I don't give a fuck what I said, give me the money. <laughs> it's my money. I work hard for that money, so I feel he was calling an audible on his system. He was going to change his system to betting whatever he had left on red and then return to the system. I bet red, that's what I did today. It's not much of a story, really. This is how irrational, though, you are as, as a gambler. I go to the roulette table, right? I put $200 on red, the fucking thing spins, and the ball lands on black. And I say, fuck, I almost picked that. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody at the table understood. They're like, oh, yeah. You can't overthink it. You know, you, you know anything about the game of roulette. <laughs> That's funny when you're in the middle of the night writing down, and then I double it, and then I triple it when I lose, and then I lose again, and I... <laughs> um, but I, I do love Las Vegas. Uh, I did fly, it was a lot of turbulence. It's this little thing called Jet Sweep, if you guys ever want to fly. It goes from Burbank to fucking LA, uh, Vegas, I mean. 
uh, costs 120 bucks, right? It's a private jet. It's 120 bucks. I mean, it's not like super fancy, but 30 people and uh, 120 bucks. Why am I telling you this? I know. <laughs> this is more informational than a joke. <laughs> But at the end, I get a little scared on those little fucking uh, airplanes because when little airplanes crash, they don't even they don't make the newspaper. <laughs> They're so common that they don't even fucking. It's like on the scroll, like underneath. The, now, when the big jets go down, whew, oh, here's a little trick with the big, with the big jets. If you get on one of these big big airplanes always sit in the emergency exit row because you get a lot of extra leg room and all you have to do to get to sit in those seats is uh, is lie <laughs> and uh, so, so uh, the stewardess will come up to you or uh, knockouts I'm sorry they're flight attendants you gotta be very careful with words. <laughs> but I'm from a different time. You know, when I was young, if you were a flight attendant and you were a lady, we called you a stewardess. And if you were a flight attendant and you were a man, we called you a, uh, you know, <laughs> a steward. You motherfuckers, man, I should, I should walk off this stage in disgust. <laughs> Unfucking believable. <laughs> well, it's hard with words, you know. I mean, I mean, uh, everybody can be anything nowadays, you know. And uh, I remember when my kid was little, you know. I told him, I said, "You can be anything you want, Dylan." And uh, he said, "I want to be seven feet." And I said, "Ah, <laughs> let me rephrase that. <laughs> you can be one of five things." <laughs> But yeah, now you can be anything you want, man. <laughs> now when I, was, when I was young, I remember one time, I went up to my dad, right? And I said, Dad, I think I'm a little girl. And he said, uh, <laughs> he said to me, he said, uh, I thought you had a cock. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, you got me. <laughs> but I, I only say that. I only say that to show how hateful we were back then. <laughs> now, my dad was not completely hateful, you know, he fought Hitler. <laughs> People are complicated. <laughs> he had his good side, he fought Hitler. <clears throat> but he had his evil side, where he thought having a cock had something to do with being a boy. I mean, it's hard for us to even fathom such an idea today, but back then, we were hateful. <laughs> now, you know what my friend told me, he goes, you gotta get woke, you know? Because I, I did not woke. <laughs> But why, why is it I have to believe fucking, just because some person believes some fucking shit? You know what I mean? Like I was trying, I was trying to do this lady fucking, that was a man, whatever the fuck it was. It was a uh, man. But it was clearly a lady. So the man says to me, because I'm Christian, the man says to me, how can you believe in an in a invisible man in the sky. I go, well, I believe you're a fucking man. I mean, <laughs> ain't that far a fucking jump? <laughs> Shouldn't she have to believe what I say? Or? <laughs> How dare you say Jesus Christ. How dare you, you fucking ignorant. Anyways, um, that's the old me. I got my woke jokes. I wrote them on my magic phone. I just started today. But nothing funnier than woke jokes. <laughs> Nobody gets hurt. Nobody laughs. God damn it, where are my fucking excellent woke jokes? Fuck you, I can't turn my goddamn 
You know that, whatever. <laughs> I write, I have notes on my magic phone and I write them down. But maybe I can just remember it off the top of my head. Here it is. First of all, with woke jokes, you gotta remember one thing. They're not funny. <laughs> but they're important. <laughs> and they're said with a great deal of uh, either anger or, you know. So here it is. Um, hey! <laughs> Listen, I don't know what's happening to us as Americans, but there's some things that are happening that are wrong. And not who we are as Americans. Now, you take the southern border and what's happening at the southern border. Well, that is not who we are as America. You know, you may not know this, but there at the southern border right now, today, there are children as young as two or three years old that are being separated from the people that bought them from the parents <laughs> or the cartel or whatever. And, and the kid gets through and then the cartel guy can't get through and a deal's a deal. <laughs> it's not who we are as Americans. Ripped from the arms. I don't, th I, I don't think they do that every time. By the way, you know, a journalist used to just say, hey, and then they take the, and now it's like, I rip. <laughs> Is that a baby in your arm? They rip, rip that baby out, and then we'll throw it over there. Isn't that actually what any retard believes happens? <laughs> uh, that's another thing I'm not supposed to say. I, I got in trouble, said retard, but anyway. I got in trouble for everything, like, uh, I said retard, man, so, anyway, I got this reviewer guy all mad at me, he said, fucking Norm said retard, he goes, uh, and the, the reviewer said, uh, uh, I mean, this just shows uh, how uh, stupid Norm is, <coughs> and then I thought to myself, hey, what about the stupid people? <laughs> it's not their fault, they're stupid. <laughs> This guy's insulting the fucking all stupid people. I guess you're allowed to insult stupid people unless they're real stupid and they're retards. I don't get it. You tell me the rules and I'll do my best. And context means something, right? Apparently not. Like, I remember when I said retard my act because I remember the joke. And here was the context. You tell me if this makes any difference. The context of me using the word retard was, I love retards. <laughs> is, is that hate speech? Can that possibly be defined as hate speech? <laughs> I'll tell you the precise thing I said. I said that because of the reason is I do love retards. And, and, and I also I use the word retard because it's just... I know what it means. It means arrested in your development, sometimes retarded, stopped, slowed down, you know? I could say Down syndrome, but then I'd be worried people think I'm a fucking doctor or something. And, then I'd, and they'd want me to hit their knee with a hammer or something. I don't got time for that. <laughs> By the way, why do they still do that? What the fuck? Are they? Not retarded, are we? Like, you go to a doctor and he goes, okay, I'm going to hit your knee with a hammer now. You're like, okay, excellent, good idea. <laughs> then he hits your knee with a hammer, you're like, ah, my knee! And he's like, excellent. He writes it down in his paper. It's like, that's exactly how you're supposed to react when struck on the knee by a hammer. Good, good. Good, you're, uh, you're not uh, paralyzed. That's good. We can uh, just check that box. But anyway, so that's why I don't say down the center, I say return. So, but I love retards, and this is the reason. I had a, a, a retard uh, live uh, three, three um, I live in an apartment, so three apartments away from me, there was this retard, he was, I think he was like 22 years old, lived with his parents, and I was trying to become his friend, and his parents wanted nothing to do with that. <laughs> For obvious reasons. <laughs> Because we live in this cynical world where I didn't want to fuck him, obviously. 
<laughs> what I wanted is I thought some of his happiness would wear off because see, retards are happy. That's why I envy them so much. That's why I love them. I mean, goddamn, if there was a, like, a, like an injection of retard juice I could take, it would take in a second. Because it's happiness. That's all we want. Right? What do we want other than to be happy? And how often are we happy, you know? Once or twice. I mean, not in your life, but you know. Like, like I'm happy when I wake up. I think it's because that's when there's all the hope, you know what I mean? I think that's where I'm happiest. I wake up and I'm like, ah, god damn. I'm glad I bought that Tempur-Pedic pillow. God damn, that was the best purchase of my life. But then, that doesn't last long because the light comes in and then, you know, kind of your life comes in and it gets all over you like a fucking spider web or something. You're like, yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck happened to me? Well, you ever look in the mirror? I'm not talking physically. I mean, like, like late at night or something, you have you turn the light on, you look in the mirror, you go, ah! <laughs> what became of me? I used to be a nice fella. <laughs> and at that point, I'd like to have a retarded friend, and he'd go, hey, I like bananas. I go, yeah, me too, goddamn. <laughs> I never thought of it that way, man. They're yellow. Your fucking rice are yellow. What do you say we go buy a fucking banana right now? Me and you. <laughs> Happiness, man. That ain't, that ain't. That's hard. I remember, this, this is what I think of happiness. I remember when I was a kid, I went to Frontierland. God damn, it was the coolest place. They had a bank and like a fucking, a sheriff would come out of a bank robbery. And the sheriff, there'd be a guy in that voice. The sheriff Clayton's coming, you know, and he'd come and it was the coolest thing. And there was this old prospector, uh, except he was Mr. Becker from down the street, but whatever. Uh, he was pretending to be an old prospector. So uh, he said, uh, hey, uh, young fellas, how would you like to for gold and uh, we're like sure Becker yeah and uh, so we go and I don't know if you've ever panned for gold but it's a it's a it's a bunch of uh, sort of sand in water right in a trough of water so and then you take a thing you go like this here you know for about 20 minutes and at the end you have a bunch of sand <laughs> and uh, they're like what the fuck hey Becker that's the goal. And I'm like, no, no, keep going. So you fucking like forever. And finally, there's the shadow of a glister of a fucking some gold looking thing. And then you're thrilled. You're like, ah, ah, gold. You're like Daffy Duck. Ah, ah gold. So that's how I look on life. <laughs> that most of life, sand. <laughs> Once in a while, a little gold. But most of your life is just like. <sighs> you ever walk through sand? Damn, this motherfucking sand. <laughs> and what's that? Oh, it's a little piece of gold. Hey, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, retards are walking around with big bars of gold in their hands, you know, <laughs> skipping down a golden road with golden clouds in the sky and all their golden friends. <laughs> <coughs> so I think it's the people that are against me on retards that uh, really are, don't like retards because they pity them. And what, what worse thing you can do to a person than pity them? You know, what an what a ugly thing to do to a person, to pity them. I envy retards. I see them pitied, you know, I'll see people looking. There'll be four retards, you know, standing there, there'll be guys looking at them, go, ah, look at them laughing over there. It's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. They don't understand the horrors of life. That's the problem. <laughs> and you know what the most tragic thing is? There's no cure for it. They'll probably die, Happy. 
I love me my retard. <laughs> Where's my retard tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Kathy Griffin's got her gaze. I got my retard. <laughs> anyway, I don't know where the fuck we started talking about that. Man, I was in the airplane. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, flying, and you know that those. Uh, uh, oh, oh, I sang about the. I don't know what I was talking about the emergency exit. Right? Because the stewardess—that's where we all got into this mess in the first place. The stewardess, or the—I mean, the flight attendant—comes to you, and the flight attendant says to you, uh, "Listen, in case the plane crashes, and." Uh, you know, a flood of gray-black smoke races down the fuselage uh, towards your uh, lungs. Uh, would you mind letting everyone else out before you? And then you say, yes, I will do that. <coughs> Funny thing is, I was going to ask you if I could do that. That's the funny thing. Before you ask me, I was going to ask you because I feel it's well worth the extra inch and a half of leg room. Stop. Meanwhile, in real life, I'd be fucking kicking my own mother. I got the fucking old whore. I live a full life, goddammit. I, I used to be on TV. What the fuck? I get to come out first. Here's the thing. Also, that airplane, right? That when that crashes, when the plane crashes, I feel that that window uh, may change locations. Like it, it might no longer be right beside you after the nine thousand mile an hour collision or whatever the fuck it is. I know it goes down fast and hard. I was listening to the, you know, you listen to those warnings, and I guess I don't, I just block my ears to them because I've heard them so often. But there's one I, I'm sure you guys have all heard of, but for some reason I missed it. It says if you're, if the oxygen mask comes down, they go, if the oxygen mask comes down, be sure to put it on your own face before you put it on the face of your little child. And I was like, God damn, that was my plan. You have to blab it to everybody. But anyway. <laughs> I think it's just to make you feel better because, you know, the things they tell you, you know. They go, by the way, in case of a big crash, don't forget that your uh, uh, seat uh, cushion is also a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck believes that? <laughs> go, hey, honey, I'm man, you don't be cheap at the cottage this year. I just bought us five boats. <laughs> but of course that never happened. You ever hear a fucking, uh, hey, you turn on the news, hey, a plane crashed in the Pacific. But don't worry, everybody floating around on their fucking boats. <laughs> they listen to the lady. Everything's cool, everything's fine. No, everything's, you know, you have no chance. If a plane crashes, right? Think about this, you ever see a plane crash? They take pictures of it, videos. They don't care. And that's because you never see a body in a plane crash. And that's because the speed vaporizes everything so that you're, there's nothing that even resembles a, a human being. It's just a whole bunch of uh, just, I don't know, it's stuff. It's stuff. That's what it is. It's a plane load of stuff. They go in, they go, God damn, there's a lot of stuff in this fucking plane. <laughs> and then. Uh, the loved ones of the victims, uh, they want the stuff. They don't call it stuff, they call it remains. It's a nice word for stuff. Ashes to ashes, stuff to stuff. <laughs> they want the remains, you know? And I understand that, you know what I mean? Like they go, oh God, man, I can't get to sleep because my, my firstborn Mitchell, I love him so much, I, I, can't, I can't even get to sleep because I keep thinking of his final minutes on that airplane. If only I could see his remains. <laughs> ah, get a good night's sleep then. With that picture imprinted on my head. I'd be just like an ambient. I'd be almost... Then I could put this whole thing behind me. <laughs>
And you're not going to get the real remains. It's not like they go on the plane and go, hey, look at that strawberry blonde lock of hair. I bet that belongs to Agnes from sitting over there. Didn't you find her uh, shin bone earlier there, Jeff? Put that over there. Reconstruct that. What the fuck? Are you crazy? They just go on the plane. They go, holy fuck. Look at all this stuff. And then they go, here's the ID. It says Norm MacDonald, 190 pounds. Okay, shovel 190 pounds of stuff into a bag. Let's go. Daylight's burning. Stamp Norm on the side of that one and send it off to his mother. His mother wants to see it. And then my mother gets it and goes, oh, excellent. Good, good. Well, now I can look back and laugh at it. Hey, I don't I remember Norm having three eyeballs. I guess none of us really knew him after all. <laughs> Each one a stranger from the other. <laughs> God damn my fucking goddamn heel. Not my heel. What do you call uh, what do you call uh, those uh, those laces that tie your shoes? Laces, right. So uh, I'm going to uh ah! Ah! <coughs> Tie my shoes. <laughs> ah. Ah. Thank you. Oh my god, I gotta start training again. <laughs> Fuck, man, I don't even want to think of what my abs look like now. <laughs> the abs? Yeah, they were invented back in the 80s, I think. Yeah. You're right. What are you, some kind of ab history expert? Or something? <laughs> like fucking facts? Here's the problem with abs, because I got six of them. You know? And uh, the problem is, I gotta wear a fucking shirt all the time. So I'll be hanging around, go, hey guys, uh, you, uh, what if I took my shirt off? And they're like, oh, no way. <laughs> It's like when you have a, if a guy has a big cock, right? No, I don't have a big cock. But if a guy has a big cock, how, how the fuck is a girl supposed to know? You know, like I know they say, if look at the guy's feet, you know? And I don't know if that's true or not. I, I do know with, with ladies, however, and this is a, a thing for you men, a little tip. If you go into a bar, you're looking at women, right? Check out their feet. Because if they have big feet, they're gonna have big tits. <laughs> so, so <trash. laughs> Anyways, but here's the thing about flying, and this is why this is why I believe in God. Because sometimes you survive uh, an airplane crash, but only very seldom. Only when you crash into the Andes. Because <laughs> God likes fucking jokes. And uh, so he's like, fuck it, man. Instead of killing them all, why don't I kill them? But first, make them wrestle with a moral quandary for 10 or 12 weeks. <laughs> Cannibalism, the quandary of cannibalism, which I'm against. I, uh, I guess most of you know that if you follow my career, uh, all my anti-cannibalism work I go from. And I'm not going to use this as some sort of bully pulpit to preach to you. You know what I mean? First of all, you're adults, and your views on cannibalism are not things that I'm going to change. I, I go to the youth, the young kids. You know, tell them. I travel all across this great continent, you know, except for Mexico. I don't want to go to Mexico. But, <laughs> but Canada and the United States. <clears throat> and all through this great continent, except for Mexico. I don't want to <laughs> By the way, how did that even happen? I'm, like, I'm not a geography expert, but you got Canada, it's cool, right? And then America, it's cool. And then Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know, just dots. <laughs> Dashes, I guess they call it nowadays. 
But now I can't remember what I was going to say. Oh, yes, cannibalism. <laughs> so I travel from high school to high school, and I tell the kids, listen, it's not cool to be a cannibal. <laughs> you know? Can I lie to you? You know, you will be the talk of the school for a while. You know, um, <laughs> you fucking ate a guy in PE, you know. <laughs> but in the future... I'm talking about, you know, because they look back on your fucking uh, uh, Twitter and shit, and then they go, oh, what's this one? I ate a guy. <laughs> the problem with the, the Andes and this moral quandary of cannibalism is that they don't start thinking about the moral quandary of cannibalism until they're in the Andes. And then their minds are mixed up because it's so cold. <laughs> I am I, I am prepared for any eventuality. As I like to pride myself on that. At any eventuality. Like, if any, I'm, like, anytime I'm on an airplane, as soon as there's a little turbulence, I go, I'm eating that fucker in 14C. <laughs> Fuck it, I saw him on the way in. That looks delicious. <laughs> Big fat guy, god damn, he looked good. That's mine. And as soon as we crash into the end, he's like pulling behind a fucking snowbank. <laughs> And then everybody else would be, you know, and then 60 days would pass, and everybody would be like, what do we do, you know? Maddened by hunger, they're trying to make it, and I'd be like, brat. Ah, what was that again? Ah, what's the problem? Anybody want to do crunches? I feel like I need to do a few crunches. We're getting a little... And they go, okay, we've taken it to a vote. We're going to eat the corpses. Okay, where are the corpses? And I'm like, ah, oh. <laughs> corpses, yeah. See, the thing is this. Uh, I know where there's a whole bunch of bones. <laughs> a lot of meat on those bones, if you like. And then they can't do anything to me because fucking they haven't eaten in 80 days. I'll eat those fuckers. <laughs> They're trying, right? Eh? <laughs> I write down, I wrote all this shit down, right? Because I think of jokes. And then I go, I write them down and I'll do them tonight. Or, you know, next week, whatever. And then, here's the problem. Like, I'm looking at a joke right now. Not a joke. It says, big fluffy dog. <laughs> and I remember when I wrote that down, I didn't write down that piece of paper, I wrote down on the notes section of my magic phone. And what happened was, I went to the dog park, you know, because I was taking my friend's dog over. And uh, my uh, friend's dog and this big fluffy dog showed up, and then they did this thing that was so funny and completely universal. And uh, I don't remember. <laughs> That's why I wrote down big fluffy dog, but I shouldn't have written that. <laughs> so I remember when I started comedy, right? We'd all get together, the comedians. We'd do a show and afterwards we'd go fucking get a fucking drink and do every goddamn drug that existed. And uh, then we'd all talk about comedy. You know, we'd go, hey, what about this joke? If I can go to the luggage and I got a carousel. I'm like, no, I'm moving. Ah. <laughs> funny as thing I ever heard in my life. God, man, that's funny. And we keep saying funny things. But then the next day, we'd wake up. And of course, the next day you don't wake up any of that because you're blackout drunk. So you don't remember anything from the night before. So I, I thought of an idea in my head. And this was before, you know, magic phones or even teensy weensy tape recorders. I got me one of them little books, you know, little notebooks, and I said, next time at the party, right, if I say anything funny, or if anybody says anything funny, I'll just steal it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I will write it down. In my, in my little uh, my little book, and the next day I'll have it, 
So when I go to the smoking nightclub, we'll have my great job. So the next time, the same thing, we had a big fucking party and I said, funny, ah, so funny, everything. So the next day, I couldn't remember anything, but I was so excited. I'll never forget this. I ran to my little book and I opened it and all it said on it was, that's so funny. <laughs> It's actually a true story. I got all the other fucking lies I said. That was a true one. Don't be a son of a bitch. I, um, when I started, I drank a lot when I started out, and I don't do that anymore. Big part of the problem is that uh, on the road when you drink, See, when you do stand up on the road, you got to go and do morning radio, which is like fucking super early in the morning, like seven, eight o'clock. You got to do a couple hours of morning radio. So if you party all night and I was always doing this, man, like I get fucking drunk and stoned and everything. And then I get back to my hotel and I, if I remembered about the radio, you know, so I go, yeah, excuse me, can I get a wake up call, please, for six o'clock? Oh, it's five to six. Huh? <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, well, I better let you go. You'll be dialing soon, I guess. <laughs> I remember when I drank, they had these. This is what stopped me from drinking, was these little fucking drinks that were called shooters. And uh, they're a little tiny. It tastes like candy. You go, fuck it, I'll drink a hundred of them, you know? And they're like, yeah. Try to find your wallet, which is like right on the ground, but it's like a thousand miles away. <laughs> and uh, and then I get home and driving the cab on the way home, just put my head out of, like a dog, <sighs> breathing, I try to not throw up and die. And so, ah, memories. <laughs> I remember the shooters always had sex names, you know? It'd be like blowjob, that was a very popular one. Clearly, it was just a, a, an excuse to sexually harass waitresses. You know, so, no, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> Yo, yeah, what do I want? I'll tell you what I want, Phyllis. Um, I would like you to give me a uh, blowjob. <laughs> 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 oh, and also, uh, my buddy Phil, I'd like you to give him two blowjobs. <laughs> She's like, I only make eight dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> or they would do the opposite. They do like some real romantic thing. Because um, you know you're conscious, you have a conscious brain and a subconscious brain. Subconscious. I was mix those two up. Conscience and conscious. Okay. So I don't know if you guys know this, but um, because I go to college now, but your regular brain is up in the front, I think. And that, you know, tells you when you should stop <laughs> eating Count Chocula because you're going to throw up. Like but then you have this subconscious and that fucking thing thinks all kinds of crazy shit. You don't even know what it's thinking. And um, so anyways, uh, that's why they would do those romantic, this is my theory, that's why they do those romantic drink names. There was one, the most popular one was called Sex on the Beach. And I think it was because your unconscious brain, because it was all drunk, it would go, hey, maybe if I drink it, that will happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, it doesn't. I, I don't know if you've ever had a night of drinking end up uh, with making love on a beach. <laughs> Very seldom that happens. <laughs> the only time I've ever heard it happen, as a matter of fact, was a young man named Joran Vandersloot. Oh. Oh. Uh, not my idea of a gentleman, I'll tell you that. But uh, anyways, uh, so you probably will not end, end up making sweet, sweet love on a beach. But, um, and I'm not saying they should name them you know, after what really happens, after you get drunk, then you would never order it, you know? Nobody would go to a shooter bar and go, yeah, give me a uh, having sex with a dude. I swear to God, that was a lady, I swear to God. Um, and my friends, so I will have, once again, uh, uh, sex with a dude. I swear to God, that was a lady. I did, I think it was a lady. 
and my friend will have a uh, senseless knife fight. <laughs> And don't scrimp on the gin this time. <laughs> that last one was a little sensible. <laughs> um, anyways, I do not drink anymore. And I know you guys, yes, I know you think I'm better than you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not better than you, you know? I guess I am in a way, but... <laughs> but not... <laughs> Just because I don't drink <laughs> drugs, you know. And actually, you know what you want to hear the truth? I do do drugs. You know? And I'm gonna tell you why. I drink Red Bull, right? And you guys go, hey, Red Bull is not a drug. Really? Because it's got caffeine in it. And that's a drug. You're like, caffeine is not a drug. I'm like, yeah, it is. It's a drug. And I smoke, smoke cigarettes. You go, what? Well, what? That's not a drug. Really? Really? Because it's got nicotine in it. That's a drug. And you're like, no, it's not a drug. And I'm like, are you guys fucking retarded or something? <laughs> yes, it's a drug. Nicotine is a drug. Caffeine is a drug. Whatever. I do uh, uh, LSD. You're like, well, that's not a drug. Really? Because it bends time. I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do LSD that often. Um, I just do it to before the show. It's a little ritual. I'll I'll eat a fistful of LSD, <laughs> and um, they send me this uh, psychiatrist and. Uh, <laughs> A broken record this guy has. It's like, Norm, you have to stop eating a fistful of LSD before every show. I'm like, God damn it, man. Is that all you ever say? I love how he's the expert. This guy. This guy. You should say him. He's a fucking 12-foot purple hound dog. But he knows everything. He knows everything. Because he's read all those melting books behind him, so. <laughs> Unbelievable where these guys get their fucking ideas. <laughs> there was a, uh, what was the, uh, think about that unconscious, subconscious thing, because I remember my buddy one time, he's in psychology, he took, he went to college, this guy, and I love milk, right? So we were, at, we were eating a meal one time. So I take a, a drink of milk, and my friend goes, you know why you're uh, drinking that milk, right, Norm? And I say to him, uh, it's not because I like milk, I know that. Because <laughs> I know this guy. You know. So he goes, no, it's not. He goes, the reason you're drinking that milk is because you, you miss sucking on your mother's breast. I'm like, ah. <laughs> Now, you guys don't know my mother. <laughs> but she's wonderful. She's a saint. You know how people you know, say their mothers are saints? My mother is actually a saint. So, I mean, she hasn't performed two miracles, right? I guess she's not actually a saint. But she's much more saint-like than your fucking mother. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a generation. Like my mother's 85. There was a generation of women that you all know, maybe it's your mother, maybe it was your grandmother, but they lived at a time, and I support you, me too, you too. <laughs> More than anything, because you know, for the young girls, it's gonna be fantastic, but no one like my mother will ever exist again. And it's just this generation of women that were so like selfless and uh, like my mother would be, you know the type of woman, like uh, at dinner time, she's in the, everyone's eating and she's in the kitchen. And everybody have a second, you know, did you, are you sure? And then, oh, but the turnips, the turnips. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to make sure everybody got, and then she would, whatever was left, she would make a little plate for herself, you know? And uh, that's what my mother was like, still is like, she lives right beside me. 
Her eyes shine love. I've never heard her say a, a phrase that it had any irony flecked in, you know? She just, uh, and so happy, you know? Like she'll come back to the grocery store, she'll go, Norm, the funniest thing happened in the store. I said, well, hey, Mom. She says, uh, <coughs> there was a woman buying a pineapple. It was $1.69 last week, and this week, it was $1.19. I'm like, that's not a story, you old bag. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a story, I, said, I don't say that, but... <laughs> But I would trade plays with my mother in a, in a second because she, all she knows is, is love, you know, how to love people. That's hard, man. That's hard. Um, man, I forgot why you brought that up. <laughs> oh, I remember. I don't want to suck her tits. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So maybe I'm shallow. <laughs> I want to suck my mother's tits, all right? <laughs> so anyways, I'm having this discussion with this guy at the fucking restaurant, and now, after he tells me this, the milk is still there. <laughs> and what the fuck am I going to do? Guzzle it? Ah! <laughs> milk, you know, I can't even leave it there. It was the worst. Whatever. <laughs> oh, and then it, it uh, came time to order our entrees. You know what this guy gets? Two meatballs and a banana. I'm like, hey, hey, hey! <laughs> Wait, wasn't even on the menu. Like he had to. <laughs> What's good for the goose is this is just absolutely. I read about that subconscious, unconscious. They said when you. Pick a president. This is an election year. This is kind of a, uh, some word. Apropro. <laughs> you ever say a word? You go, I hope this is what it means. <laughs> um, that when you vote for a president, they say the real reason you, the you know, uh, and that does uh, explain the results of the last election, I think, because. Who the fuck would want to have a beer with Hillary Clinton? I swear to God. What the fuck? Be the longest beer of your life, you know? You're like, ah, oh, what? Make it a pitcher, Earl. <laughs> Meanwhile, Trump, god damn, it'll be the funnest fucking beer ever. You know? like, god damn. Those big golden chairs, huh? Must be fun. <laughs> Sit down, big solid gold chair. Just grab him by the pussy. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> by the way, when he said that, he didn't say him. He said if you were a celebrity, you were grabbed by the pussy. Now I used to be on the TV. I don't think I fucking got enough out of my celebrity, I swear to God. You know? I was on Saturday Night Live and my kid uh, wanted to go to college. I didn't know I could put him in Harvard. <laughs> but my kid's a fucking retard, so... I put him in some retard school, which by the way is fucking super expensive also. But I, I just didn't know. And with the women, I would, first of all, I wouldn't even know how to grab one by the pussy because a woman's, if you know anything about a woman's physiognomy, it's like inverted. It's not like a, you know what I mean? Like it could grab a, what? <laughs> like I could grab a guy's juicy cock and hot and beautiful balls. You know what I mean? That'd be simple. <laughs> You end up with plenty of shiners, though, don't tell you that. I don't care if you have been on the TV. But my thing with women was, I would uh, say to the woman, hey, uh, any interest in let me lie down on top of you? And they would say, no. And they'd say, how about we have a dinner? And I go, uh. So. 
Because I like eating dinner with a, my, I got my TV uh, tray, you know. I got my TV dinner and I got my TV. And uh, I got my Matlock uh, TVs. <laughs> I don't have DVDs, I have CDs, but not CDs, VHSs. <laughs> but anyways, I would go to dinner with the lady and then, you know, maybe we'd have another dinner. And then afterwards I go, hey, you got, Eddie, you have any thinking of that? Uh, me lying down on top of your thing? <laughs> and she goes, yeah, I don't want to do it. <laughs> she goes, but maybe after another dinner, who knows? <laughs> so then, like 40, 50 dinners later, <laughs> she decides that she'll let me lie down on top of her. So, and, and also, I feel I should have gotten way more women than eight. <laughs> because I was on the TV, um, I, here's the biggest thing about me as a guy, no surprises, you know what I mean? Like I feel ladies must have a lot of surprises, you know, where at the last second suddenly the guy's jizzing on their foot or something like that. <laughs> Nothing like that with me, man, I'm fucking, I have so much respect for ladies. I take the lady, this is, this is uh, my... Uh, my uh, land down with ladies, so it happens. <laughs> By the way, I don't do it anymore because I'm too old. But I have a pickup line that I'm willing to give you guys if you want it. Um, I will tell you that it's never worked ever once. But <laughs> it should work, and I really don't understand why it doesn't. Because on paper, it's the perfect pickup line. I will look at a girl, maybe a girl will be sitting over at the bar there, right? And uh, she's drinking alcohol. I can tell because there's a you know, a fucking umbrella or something. <laughs> and uh, so I sidle up beside her and I whisper, discretion being the better part of valor, into her ear so no one else can hear. I just whisper, I can get us a bottle. <laughs> Never worked one single time. You figure one out of a thousand. That's what my buddy told me. He said, you know what you do as when I was a young kid. He goes, you just go up to a girl and go, hey, you want to fuck? And 99 of them fucking punch you in the face, but one of them fuck you. <laughs> Turns out, a hundred of them punch you in the face, and none of them fuck you. <laughs> that my share of shiners in my time. But we're all worth it for those eight ladies. But anyways, I, so I'll take the lady. This is how much respect I show ladies. I take them into my bedroom, which is completely dark, black. Can't see your own hand. <laughs> and uh, then we go to uh, separate corners and disrobe. <laughs> we go into the bed that's in the middle of the room. On the bed, seven or eight quilts, you know, we get underneath. We don't speak. We find each other. You know, five or ten minutes pass, and we never speak of it again. <laughs> but still didn't get much return business. I don't know, nowadays though, I don't know what the fuck, you know what I mean? With porno, Jesus Christ. That's why, well, that's why I can't understand what else, because we're in a culture where everyone's outraged and offended by everything, you know? But they go, God damn, you're that stand-up comedian? God damn, he was offended. So offensive. And I'm like, well, he didn't offend me. I, I've seen internet pornography. <laughs> you think anything a fucking guy would say on stage would offend me? I've seen hell itself. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen internet pornography, but by God, if you haven't, don't. Because it changes you. I mean, fundamentally changes you. Not for the better. I remember when I first saw it. When you first see internet pornography, you're shocked by the sheer volume. You know, it's always one to 12 of 35 billion, you know. Fuck. And, anyway, and you never see the same lady twice. Is every lady a whore? When did this happen? <laughs> and they're all doing stuff that no lady's ever, ever done to me. <laughs> and I was on the TV.
After a while, it desensitizes you. You know that word that you read in those big, thick books? <laughs> you get desensitized, and then, and then at first, you know, you're whacking off eight times a day. But after a while, you eat more and more, like any addiction, you know what I mean? And you get like, ah, oh, I can't find anything. Look at this one. She only take eight cocks up her ass. What the fuck's wrong with her? <laughs> Man, she's a prude. Why'd you get in the business in the first place? <laughs> I'll find something else. I'll find a worse thing a person can do to another person. <laughs> Very misogynistic, too. You can tell by the way they name those little five-minute things, you know? It's always like a dirty fucking whore loves sucking cock and guzzling come down her face. Oh, wait a minute. What? It's not the motion picture I just watched. It's going to be the fellas' idea almost entirely. Ladies are glazed eyes. So many drugs coursing through her system that they gave her when she fucking got off the bus. <laughs> I can't do that shit anymore, man. <laughs> but then it's hard to go back, you know, to lying down on top of a lady if you're seeing that. <laughs> or outrage. I'm outraged. Outraged? Nowadays? God damn. I walk down New York City, lower Manhattan, ankle deep in blood and bones. <laughs> Fucking papers cascading around my head with words on them like urgent and bulletin and for your eyes only and, and they covered the sky like some <coughs> profane ticket tape parade and uh, me searching for my older brother he was in northern Ontario <laughs> You know how scary it is when a building chases you down the fucking street? <laughs> I can honestly say a building chased me down the street. Isn't that fucking crazy? But I'm outraged by Shane Gillis or some fucking thing. Not outraged by anything. Not fucking devastated by anything. I wish, you know. I wish I had as big a heart as everybody else because I hear people, they go, God, it's devastating. I saw that hurricane. I'm like, really? Huh? I give a fuck. <laughs> like, I'll turn on the TV and be like, today in Africa, uh, earthquake killed. If I go, click. <laughs> most boring story I ever heard. <laughs> Isn't there a Matlock reunion out there? <laughs> I mean, it makes me sad that nothing makes me feel sad, but so be it, you know? That's a pretty good one. It makes me sad that nothing makes me feel sad. I bet I could put that on the side of a cup. <laughs> Think about how much wisdom there is today compared to... In the old days, you have to read a whole goddamn fucking book that thick by fucking a guy you never heard of. Uh, and then maybe there'd be one wise thing. Now, you just go to a cup store. <laughs> Every cup has the wisest motherfucking thing you've ever heard. Oh, God damn, I'm going to buy that cup. Fuck it, I'll remember that one. I ain't going to a cup store for hours. Come out, go, I'm a better person now. <laughs> On account of those cups. <laughs> oh my God Almighty. I apologize. I forgot to start my act. Um, <laughs> we only have four more minutes. <laughs> I, can't, I won't lie, I'm panicking. <laughs> 
I love you too. That's very kind of thing to say. This is my favorite place. I'm going to do my special from here, I think. And uh, you guys can all come if you want. And, uh, I'm doing a special next year. We all woke and everything. Fuck it. <laughs> Maybe I'll just sleep through the entire special. Go, <laughs> oh, man, Norm seems even less woke. <laughs> just crashed out. <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess I believe in some things that the, the Me Too things, and then sometimes I, you know, some things I don't. Like uh, you know, the big one: believe all women. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. <laughs> God knows we've never heard a woman lie. <laughs> Craziest notion of all time. <laughs> if you want to find out if women lie all the time, here's who you ask. A woman. <laughs> She'll tell you. You're in your with a woman, and she's like, ah, fucking cunt Henrietta's coming over. God damn. Hi, Henrietta! Hey, Henrietta! <laughs> fucking hugging, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> But I, I think women are, I think women are more, are, are actually better than men, you know. Not smarter, but <laughs> I only say not smarter because I hear so many times on stage, you gotta go, I think women are smarter than men, and then everybody claps, I go, what the fuck? <laughs> A terrible thing to say, you know, women are smarter than men, and I have people clap, and then I thought about it, and I said, why would they clap and shit? And I, I realized the only reason they're clapping is because they don't believe it's true at all. <laughs> they believe the opposite. So it's actually an ugly thing. Of course, women and men are the same. And we're all fucking idiots. Think any of us are smart? That fella, what, uh, uh, speaks funny and drives around in his uh, electric uh, race, uh, Wheelchair. <laughs> did he get? Did, did he? Did he pass? He is a hell of a smart fellow. Isn't it funny? Smartest guy on earth. Only thing he was interested in was pussy. <laughs> Everybody go. God damn, Stephen! Fucking, you gotta hurry up. You gotta hurry up and figure out everything about the fucking history of the universe. You're like. <laughs> so we, I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> Crazy girls. <laughs> Half price of crazy girls. That's my favorite strip club. Crazy girls. And you know what I like about it? I'll tell you what I like about it. That title, Crazy Girls. <laughs> You want to talk about truth and advertising. <laughs> you got it right there. Why, why did you say shh to her? Is she, a, is she work at Crazy Girls? No, she works at the library. No, I used to work at one of those clubs. Oh, you used to work at a strip club? Yeah. Oh, cool. And were you an exotic dancer? Yes. Oh, that's cool. What's your name? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Thompson. No, no, I'm just interested. Lauren Thompson. Lauren Thompson? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean your real name. <laughs> Lauren Thompson, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's very interesting. How long did you do that? About four years. For four years? Yeah. Wow. And would you uh, say that any girl should follow that uh, course? Uh, not really, no. In their 20s. In their yeah, 20s? they're in their 20s. Maybe. Yeah. And then they spend their 30s in rehab, is that how it is? <laughs> In real estate. Yeah. <laughs> We're from here. No, that's fantastic. If you can use it to your advantage and not get hooked on drugs, drugs, obviously, right? You, well, there's an enormous amount of drugs in the exotic dancing community, isn't there? Yeah. 
That's when I did it. Why are you answering all her questions? <laughs> what the fuck? Are you a pimp or something? God damn. Why can't you just let Lauren... <laughs> What do you do now, man? Um, I'm self-employed. Oh, wow, that's great. I do design, freelance design. Oh, that's fantastic. How old were you when you started um, in exotic dancing? Uh, I was 21. And, and now, and what are you now? You're under 30. I am 37. Are you 37? Yeah. Wow, you're wonderful oh, no. looking girl. It is her birthday. She's 39 today. She's 39 today? This is yeah. your 39th birthday? Yeah, I came to see you. Oh, for your 39th birthday? Oh, yeah. that's sweet. Thank you. What's your name? I'm her sister, Jill. Oh, you're her sister? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Jill. Jill. That's awesome. What do you do, Jill? Uh, I'd rather not say. Mental <laughs> <laughs> health. I work in mental health. Oh, you work in mental health? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great thing. I don't know why you wouldn't want to say that. She's professional, like, she's what? She's trying to be professional. Like, I'm like the she's FBI. She's trying to be a professional. FBI? I used to work at the FBI. I was a, I was a, a female body inspector. No, I worked for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And uh, I'd like to talk to you after the show about you. <laughs> I love that. Lay down Mentally. On top of me for a few Did you love that? What's that? I can lay down on top of her. <laughs> <laughs> I can see what your self employment is now. <laughs> she was an exotic dancer. Now she whores at her sister <laughs> to traveling, shadowy. Stand up. <laughs> mm. No, you're the love of her life. <laughs> I'm the love of your life? Her life. Uh, I'm the love of her life. I don't know. And yet you came to see me on your 39th birthday. We both think you're awesome, that's all. Really? Yeah. Yes, we do. Did you, have you ever had a threesome? <laughs> <laughs> You've been asked, but never done it? I had, I, I mean, I don't want to tell that. Last night I had the craziest, <laughs> hottest fucking threesome. And, uh, and also, you know, you think when you have a threesome that everybody is so, you know, evil and gross. <laughs> Two of the nicest fellas I ever met. <laughs> I mean, gentlemen, they were gentlemen. <laughs> they really were. Hey, listen, guys, thank you so much for coming out. God bless you. I love you.